Hey, how's it going, friends? My name is Angel Alex, and welcome back to the channel. We are back with some more of L.A. Noir. Now, last episode, we solved another case. I'm trying to remember exactly we played this. We haven't even played this that long, but it's just the cases kind of are all starting to blend together. But I think the last case was those guys that were street racing, I believe, and they stole tires from an abandoned car. And uh, we caught them in the middle of a street race, arrested them, all was good, and now we headed to the next uh, crime scene, which was a hit and run. Uh, this guy not looking too hot. Um, I was actually able to, uh, I loaded in before uh, everything that I did last, the end of the last episode, so I have to question this lady again and question the bartender again, which kind of makes me a little bit happy, so now I can sort of pressure the bartender into telling me what happened uh, when they fought. Um, but, um, I, I just wanted to get that on video again in case I somehow fuck it up or something. But I've, I've done all the, uh, searching around, I've looked at all the clues again, so let's go ahead and talk to this miss over here. Also, before this video starts, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below, give this video a big thumbs up, and check out all the links down in the description if you're interested in any of the gear I use. It would really help out the channel. Alright, let's talk to her. She's all yours, detective. Hello, miss. Miss Perry? Yes? Yes. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. This is my partner, Detective did. Bukowski. Alrighty, so let's review evidence, like always, and then I'll ask for questions. I don't want to fuck this up. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. All right, mate. Good cop. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. All right, one. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. I don't remember what I did. Did you see the license plate? All right. <laughs> I just couldn't Only remember. Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. I know I went bad cop on her once. C eight. All right. An argument. I think this is the one I went bad cop on. Her. Okay. Tell me more about the argument you heard. <clears throat> well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. Yeah. That's Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress and things are pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. <laughs> Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. All right. Thank That's you, done. Barry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. I sure will, ma'am. Like her accent. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. All right, we can talk to the bartender, and I know to go hard on this asshole now. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch, hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Hopefully I don't fuck it up. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna of Mrs. Patterson home. All righty. Review the evidence one more time. It's a red Lincoln Continental, partial plates, 3C8, insurance letter, wallet, intoxicated, chest wound possibly from the hood of the, the vehicle, hood ornament, stainless steel kitchen knife found with blood on it, and witness report an argument. Alrighty. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. Bullshit. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Mr. and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. All right. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? 
No, he came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. They've been talking about opening a new bar. Leroy? Leroy Sabo, the owner. All right, now we can talk more. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Uh, who knows? I just served the drinks. Back up. Bartenders hear all sorts of things. Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? <laughs> Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Hmm. All right, Thanks we got all help, of them Lynch. right that time. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Hmm. Wrinkled was not one of the things I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> oh, that's a shame, my man. I don't think any of us want to be wrinkled. Operator, give me R and I. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, three Charles eight. Cross-check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, Detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thanks, man. All right, let's head there now, then. Nowhere else Looks to go. Looks like we caught a break on this one. All right. Let's go fly a kite. All right, you can drive, sir. Let me get in our car. Careful where you're stepping, Phelps. I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. Sorry. It's all right. You know the way. You can drive. <laughs> Do we know where we're oh, going? Oh, I could stop at Pattison first or Shelton. So Shelton is the guy that is the that that hits that owns the Lincoln. And Pattison, I think, is the we were gonna talk to the wife of the victim. So I think we should go there first. That'll be good. All right, you drive, sir. <laughs> Alright, Patterson residence, 4.41 a.m. Damn, that's late. Alright. Let's have a knock. Hello, LAPD. Yes, hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? Yes. We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? Can I have a look around, please? Oh. I don't know if I should talk to her or have a look around first. She didn't even say we could have a look around and the music is not going. So I'm assuming I should talk to her. Can you yeah, tell me what happened? To... What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. Well, I, I just have someone here. I beg I... your pardon? 
You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. The owner nice to see of you're comforting bar, the right? grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. That's... It wasn't good. That's not... What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. Wow. What a, what a shit show. Okay. Review the evidence, and then I'll ask him questions. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. You expect me to believe that, Lorna? It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. The fuck? You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. Wow, all right, partnership with Leroy. The bartender said that you and Leroy were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. Sabo Shit. has no money. This place can't be worth much. Where is the money coming from? My father left me this house and some money. Lester took out a second mortgage. I held on to the money and kept my mouth shut. And that's all I'm going to say on the subject. Yikes. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this. <laughs> oh, yeah, these guys are a bunch of assholes, huh? I mean, I get it, you know, have a bad relationship or a bad marriage, whatever, but, like, come on. That's fucked up. Uh, let's have a talk on this phone. Maybe there's something important. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? Messages, please. Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Oh. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Definitely head in there next. Thanks. All right. We'll go. I'm not going to make the same mistake I did last time. And miss out a chance to... Uh, Talk to more people and all that. Oh, but it says I should go to the residence first and then the morgue. All right, I'll, I'll do this in order because I think if you do it in order, it's better. So we'll go. To, we'll go there first. All right. Wow. Okay, they live like right down the street from the victim. Shelton, residence, 4.55 a.m. There's the car. You can even look at the car, I'm sure. <clears throat> oh, are we witnessing the beginning? right there oh they waited uh, William Shelton 
Yes? It doesn't look good, Sheldon. You packing your bags and making a run for it? You know why we're here. Yes. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Sheldon. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get this son of a bitch. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Come on. Oh! No wonder he killed someone driving like this. I did not mean to kill somebody. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. Don't let that asshole get away. It's hard to freaking get them, bro. Know the way. Oh, oops. That's it. Cuff him and we're done. Whoa. Hands behind your head. I didn't mean to hit somebody. How does somebody, a vehicular Captain. manslaughter rap sound, Sheldon? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is going to love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Sheldon. You can't be serious. William Sheldon, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. I hope I can still talk to the morgue, the guy at the morgue. That was ass, dude. I hope my reputation doesn't go down for hitting, hitting, um. You're behind the wheel. Like that citizen. All right, where to? Yes, let's go to the morgue. Frankly, concerning the attitude of the producers, we're accused. <laughs> we're over here doing a freaking hit and run case and I freaking hit and ran. <laughs> All right, Central Morgue, 8.53 a.m. We're still in the same damn suit. I'm gonna switch my suit next case. It's already the next day and we're still in the same suit. Hello? We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. I was wondering why the fucking knife. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 oh years, God. son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there and they tried to stare us down. Wow. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. Fuck yeah. We have the knife, Shit. we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. Let's fucking do it, dude. Fuck yeah. Cops to the rescue. <laughs> you drive. I need to go over the case notes. Uh, where are we going? Here again. They better still fucking be here. We spoke to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. She's Leroy so... stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down. 
Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. I see you to give me up, sweetheart. All that whispering in my ear telling me how we had to get rid of him, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, all shut the up. You bases covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with it. You think I'm going to fry for you, He's Lola? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake. It's oh. too late, Sabo. Shoot! I had to kill him, bro. You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. Shit, bro. Crazy. What a perfect little family. She was so quick, quick to, you know, put him on... Put him on the bus. <laughs> so, I give you a hit and run. You bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first-degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. Thank you. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hell yeah, golden boy. Yeah, yeah. I need to switch my, my, um. Uh... We got one question incorrect. Dang, yum, city damage 10. Another visit to raise and you would have seen what Leroy was prepared to do to avoid a jail. Another visit to raise. Hmm, interesting. Not sure what that means. A slip of the tongue. On to the next case. Phelps, Bukowski. B cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there and see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. Stolen vehicle. Okay. Let's have a, a switchy switch. I swear, the more vent cards we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. It keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which oh, she's accustomed. Right. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. Passionate, romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe a word. This guy gave his wife a tap. All right, got a change of the suits. Looking fly. All right, let's head to the next case location. They're calling her the Dahlia you now. I wonder what Veronica Lake makes of that one. You hear whether they're making any progress? Well, Captain Donnelly seems to think they have it all wrapped up. Brown and Green are sweating this manly character. I heard it'll be in front of a grand jury by next week. I want to see. Fourth bag. Terrible enough being murdered like that without having their death strewn all over the front. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Shit. Look out! Look out! That was late. Yep, I got it. All right, my bad. Best driver right here. All right, six West Second Street, twelve thirty p.m. That's the car, Cole. Just pulling out of the drive. Get it. Oh shit! Already. Let's get to it. Remember, we need them healthy enough to answer questions. All right, gotcha, gotcha. No killing him. 1247, Detective Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. All right, no running over people this time, damn it. Enough 
games, Phelps. Take this guy out. I'm trying, dude. I'm trying. Oh, it's so Over the speed limit. Show me your hands. Get bracelets on him, Phelps. We got oh. him. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Oh. Like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. All right. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. And the ownership papers? From the same place. If this is a forgery, it's top notch. This will need to be traced. You have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No, nothing like that. Let me use my intuition, sure, why not? Bad cop. You better give us something, Cliff, or we're gonna make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car, I ran because because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. How much, Cliff? One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The owner, Richard Coombs. He seems like he's fine. And he made out yeah. the bill of sale personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. Right. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You gotta be kidding me! I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? If everything is legit, Harrison, you'll be out soon. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Bag his possessions as evidence and have him arraigned for Grand Theft Auto. Right, Detective. Do you know who my father is? <laughs> we need to get to Coombs Auto and check out Harrison's story. You drive, bitch. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? Where you just said, dipshit. No, I'm just <laughs> Sorry, that was a little aggressive. Open the door for me, will you? Thank you. How nice of you. Well, what? <laughs> I think he's telling the truth. Some of the most convincing people you will ever listen to are born liars. Usually they're called politicians. I think he's telling the truth, too. All right, Coons Automotive. 31 p.m. Let's have a little chat with these fellas, shall we? Not another step. I have got a Buick Century sedan that would be absolutely perfect for you. Detective Phelps, LAPD, are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. That's a joke, son. Yeah, well, it's not funny. Very amusing, Mr. Coombs. I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember rightly. Do you have the bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. Oh, my God. That's a joke, too, son. Yeah, you're fucking hilarious, man. You're killing it. Phelps, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. Go ahead. By all means, bruh. All right. Let's see. Here it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit, at least. Two thousand dollars for that car, man. That'd be nice.
Gene Archer, 146 North Fremont Avenue. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas. Shoot. All right, let's review the evidence, and then we'll ask them questions. Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? The girl just wandered in right off the street. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. Did you pay with check or cash? A check. She wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Alrighty. Can you describe this Gene Archer? Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. Good cop. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed, in a hurry to go somewhere but no place to go. You get to know the type. All right. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. Let me use my intuition on here. Good cop. All right. I was going to go back. Says Marquee Printing. You've never heard of them? Marquee. Sure. They do all the government red tape. You'll find the place down on Aliso Street near San Pedro. All right. So far, so good. What exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. Coons? Close of play on Friday. Bad cop. Sorry. Why didn't you pay the cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. All right, last question. This was all above board. Yes, of course it was. Bad cop again. Did this look legitimate to you, Coombs? I'm in used cars, son, not bearer bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks all for right. your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue the investigation. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head. <laughs> Let me shoot this guy, oh please. God. You have a pleasant day, Mr. Coombs. All righty. Now we head to the marquee. Peeps. Well, oh, Harrison wait, might be off call. the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, go out of the way, cars. I, whoop, look at that. Oh, shit, damn. Blue. Blue. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of Grand Theft Auto. I'll relay the information. Are there any messages for me? James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thank you. All right. Well, let's see what we can do first, then. You can drive. All right. So, where do you want to go? We got three new places we can go to. But let's go, um, go ahead and do them in order. Registration address quoted on pink slip. Let's head there. Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? <laughs> You've got it in for everyone I think it's today, selling cars turning you into I've always got it in for car salesmen. Doesn't matter what day it is. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line just to get the hell out of there. That is it's something I never really picked up on, but yeah, literally every car salesman tries to be like really funny. Um, 
746 North Fremont Avenue, 343 p.m. Empty. Should have known that Archer Broad would have given us a false address. Hmm. Okay. You should go to the station and see what this Belasco guy has to say. Fake address. That sucks, dude. Oops, wrong button. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I didn't have to do that. You can drive. You know the way. You can drive. We go to the printing Where are we headed? company first. <laughs> All right, three forty-eight p.m. Let's have a chitty chat, shall we? Hello. Uh, I guess I'll just. Walk on in. And what can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm a traffic detective from Central Division. Who's in charge here? I am, Gordon Lightfall. What's this about? We understand that your company prints California vehicle titles. Yes, I have the government contract to print pink slips. I've done for some years. Have you had any goods or equipment stolen recently? We're running up against stolen cars with seemingly legitimate paperwork. Not recently. Uh, have you ruled out forgery? There's no shortage of talented artists in this town. We'll keep it in mind. Any ideas? Sounds like James Belasco was picked up the same as Harrison. Let's get down to Central and hear his excuse. So we're not gonna look around anywhere? Is that what we can do here? Well, all right, then let's head to the central police station. <laughs> I'm not getting anything out of these guys, all right. Can you drive to this one? Well, let's see, all it's right. not even crossed Where off, to? though. Uh, we'll be back, maybe, I guess. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the police station, then. Central police station, 3.50 p.m. Detectives. Velasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks. Crummy bastard. James Belasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. So we got two guys saying that it's their car. The paper is real enough, Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. Bitch. You're a two-time loser. If you don't give me something, I'm gonna ask the DA for the maximum. You're looking at 10 years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. I, I want a deal. Keep talking and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. With the paperwork they provide, it's normally a breeze. All right, auto theft racket, stolen auto courier. Oops, what happens the to question. the cars once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. Give me something, Velasco, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. <laughs> How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay, I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. All right. Does the name Jean Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. Bad cop? Shit. You want my partner here to convince you that you do know her? I'm giving you the straight dope. I don't know no Jean Archer. Where do you pick up the cars, Velasco? Warehouses. Mainly in the East downtown. Let me use my intuition here. Bad cop again. This guy's an ass. An address, Velasco. You want my help with the DA? Cough it up. Now. A place on Industrial Street. I don't know the number. You're going to help me out, right? Keep talking, kid. And we'll see what we can do. All right, James. We're gonna check if this information is worth anything. And if it is, I need your help here, pal. 
If it is, then we'll know you're a man of your word, and so will the DA. Jesus. You're Phelps, right? Yes, I am. Look, can we do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical Services. The pink slips are all real. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California, the Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Pedro. The guy I spoke to was Lightfall. Gordon Lightfall. Here. I wrote it down. I have the address, I thought. Thanks, Ray. This is a great lead. We'll get down there as soon as we can. We went there, bro, and nothing happened, I thought. What? Phelps, your GTA suspect, Gene Archer, spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office, 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street. This case is like Go. all over. She won't hang around. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my lord. Oh my goodness. All right, drive, sir. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Oh my god, this case is just... I'm lost in this case. Are the pink slips real? Are they fake? Or who is the actual owner of this damn car? What the hell is going on? Alright. Check cashing. Oh, look at that. Cashing that check, huh? Hello, miss. LAPD. So you we'll gotta see your married God man again? damn it. Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving a girl a break? I could be very nice. I'm afraid I can't do that, Miss Archer. Stefan, call for black and white. Just my luck to get the only hair sure cop in the LAPD. <sighs> the fuck, dude? I have all this evidence, bro. I don't even know what to do with it. The car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster. Gene, you've blown open the whole operation because you were dumb enough to try to sell one of the cars. What do you think they're going to do to you? Give me something. I was just doing what they do. They pay me 50 bucks to drive the car. I made two grand selling it. You made zero. And if they catch you, you're dead. Is that all your life's worth? Look, a girl needs things. I don't see you looking out for me. Shut the fuck this girl. How long have you and Belasco been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? He's your Shit. boyfriend. He's the guy you boost cars with. He gave you up. He thinks you're so dumb you'd steal a free sample. So I'm no genius. I make the best with what I've got. Why are you so cruel? Like you decided to make this hard on yourself, Gene. Let's see how you handle the hard time. I'm so lost in this case, I'm not even gonna lie. What do you think? The lead on the pink slips might not have legs, Phelps, but we should give it a chance. Back to Marquis. All right, going You're back You're behind there the wheel. Again. And where exactly are we going? Friendly girl. Used to getting her own way. Wow. Little did she know her feminine charms were useless against the impenetrable Cole Phelps. She's not my type. And what is your type, Phelps? I'm married. I know that. But you're not blind or dead inside, are you? Wait, scrap that second half of the question. Uh, I don't know. Blondes, I guess. Hallelujah! The man is human after all. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh no, my yep. god. I'm with you on the blondes. Brunettes are fine too. And there's nothing wrong with a good red head. <laughs> but I draw the line at gray. You know, I might have to lift that embargo soon in the interest of maintaining a free market. A man with high standards. The standards are only as high as the last glass of whiskey. Oh my god, these guys. Alright, we're here again, god damn it. <laughs> I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Can I have a chat with this guy? Go bug someone else, huh? Uh, Alright then. 
We have some questions for you, Mr. Lightvall. All right. Mr. Lightvall, we're currently working two auto theft cases. Do you know anything about a car theft ring? Uh, certainly not. Why would I get mixed up in a thing like that? Use my intuition here. It's my last one. 80%. Okay. We have suspects with legitimate pink slips that were printed here, Lightfall. You better give me something before I bring the whole department down here. Don't be hysterical, Detective. As a matter of fact, we had a similar problem a couple of years ago. A number of used car lots were selling blank documents to a criminal organization. Do the names Cliff Harrison and James Belasco mean anything to you? No, they do not. Uh, bad cop. Harrison bought his car from Coombs. The pink slip looks good, and that points the finger here. Do you have any employee trouble? No, I don't. They've all been carefully screened. Look, now that I think about it, the name Coombs sounds familiar. I think they may have been involved in stolen documents in the past. All right. Do you have a delivery ledger, Mr. Lightvall? We would like to cross-check against the Coombs Automotive Emporium. It's a little out of the ordinary, Detective. Uh, I'm not sure I can share those sorts of records. I think I'll go good cop here. No, I don't know. Uh, good cop. Surely that is isn't confidential oh. information, Mr. Lightball. Not for me to say. It would be better if you got permission from my client. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, sir. We'll let you know if there are any developments. God Listen, damn. I'm busy. You know where the door is. Fuck you, dude. Ah, oh, fuck, dude. He's not looking, so what if I, like, go through his shit? Look for patterns, recurring names, unusual addresses, anything out of the ordinary. Ah, 58 Industrial Street. This is the one, right? No. Lightball certainly yeah. encourages repeat business. This Mr. Bigelow is a very good customer. Industrial Street, that's what we needed, okay. Are we good? I think we're good. Let's go to Industrial Street. Ah, here we go. There's another shit right here. Here we are. Maybe we should call for a couple of black and whites. Get Fleischer down here. I thought you Marines were gung-ho, Cole. You have a 45. Don't you ever want to use it? I'll take the back. Just give me a few seconds to get around there. LAPD, all of you are coming downtown with me. Think so, huh? Look sharp at the cop! Throw out the guns.
it's over. Let's clear the top floor. I don't want to get drilled in the back on the way out. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. Look at that. There are enough slips here to keep them stealing cars till Christmas. Marquis Printing Company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. So we're gonna go back to him again, like a third time, probably. Betting slip. Looks like Mr. Lightfall has been on a losing streak. We've got a trail of pink slips and stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I had to work on cars for customers. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the Ballad of Bulge. I can't give you anything. We know about Marquee Printing. You can make this easier on yourself by giving us your man on the inside. I sometimes repair cars and put them back on the road. I need a pink slip to resell them. There's no problem there. There are at least four dead men in this warehouse. A couple more. Punks won't make for that much extra paperwork. We'd be doing the legal system a favor. OK, OK, tough guy. I get the message. Lightfall, the guy who runs Marquis, he's the big shot. He likes to spend big at the track. He owes people. Lightfall, the guy with no luck at the track. Tell me about him. It's one of the guys lying over there. You're right. He has no luck. Wait, he said, he said, what? That's the best lie you can come up with, Bigelow? Hey, would I lie to you, detective? I'm not exactly in a good position here now, am I? Shit, I don't know which one to use. Gordon Lightball owns Marquee Printing, a government print shop. He's losing big at the track. He has these big government contracts. He's in hock over 20 grand. If the feds find out, the contracts will be all over. Lightfall plays ball. All right, Bigelow. The heat is off you. Play your cards right, and you'll be able to count your time in Quentin on one hand. <laughs> all right, man. That, that case is just... This case is just crazy. I'm so lost. So much going on. I'm just like, what? So much information. I got a little confused. I, I got it a little bit at the end, but I have a little bit of questions. All right, we gotta go back and freaking apprehend that dude, even though we've been back twice already. All right. What a mess. Ugh, gonna take some cleaning up, that's for sure. I wish it hadn't gone. Well, they shouldn't bring guns to work with them. We didn't have a lot of choice. <laughs> you have to admire the bare-faced cheek of someone who tries to blow your brains out one minute, then pleads innocence the next. Yeah, especially when he's surrounded by evidence. You know, guys like Bigelow spend so much time convincing themselves that they're not doing anything wrong, that they actually start to believe their own bullshit. They get sloppy. Bigelow, Lightfall, all of them. If they hadn't, who knows how long they could have kept this racket going. Complacency, oh, it's always one of two that brings them down. All right. I feel like he's gonna be here. No, oh, I mean, I feel like he was gonna be gone, but he's, he's there. All right, you bitch. You're under arrest. 
You again? This harassment is starting to wear thin. We found a box of pink slips in a warehouse full of hot cars. You signed for them, Lightbulb. I signed for all the orders and deliveries. You'll need something better than that, cowboy. Save it, Lightball. We already have all we need to send you down. I've had enough of this. You either produce some shred of proof, or I call my attorney. You're in the hole with the organization. We know about the debts, Lightball. I agree, I have a small problem. <laughs> I'm prepared to help you in any way I can, Detective. I'll name names. Uh, I need you to keep this out of the paper. I need- You need to shut up now, Lightball. Gordon Lightball, I'm charging you with conspiracy and fraud. Hands behind your back. Oh, that was a big ass case. <laughs> oh my God. The LAPD Central Traffic Division has today smashed a nationwide auto theft ring, writes crime correspondent, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, here it is. Traffic squad detectives confronted a large group of armed thugs. Yeah. After an exchange of gunfire, more than a dozen dead criminals were removed from the scene. The LAPD sustained no casualties. Damn fine work, Phelps. Now get out there and nail some more bad guys, will you? Will do. I want to finish reading this. The printer's devil. All right. Mr. Blue got two questions, three questions wrong, and did a lot of vehicle damage. My family runs a shipping business in San Francisco. We used to have two ships a week to Tokyo. We've been in shipping for two generations, Hank. I've never been on a voyage anywhere. I feel like Odysseus in the beginning of his journey. The Odyssey took 10 years, Cole. This is the American century. America can rule the world after we win this war. We need to stay alive, Cole. These men are counting on us. Have you heard what the veterans are saying to each other? No. Golden Gate in 48. That's four more hard years of fighting. Spikowski, you have a new case. Two women, possible drink drive. How is that a case? The broad says she was doped and that somebody tried to kill her. Where did this take place? That's the bitch you're gonna love. Right across the street. What? A Chevy style line took a nosedive off the escarpment, fetched up underneath a Cola King billboard. Up to it, boys. We got bad guys to catch. All right. I'm just praying the prints come through so I can nail this up. See you later, fellas. Try not to work too hard. Look at you bantering with the boys. It's a tear to my eye watching my caterpillar grow. <laughs> Shut up. I'm just trying to fit in. Educated, hardworking, straight as an arrow. I hate to break it to you, Cole, but we'll never fit in this so. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't yet. Check out all the links down in the description if you are interested in any of the gear I use. And I'll see you guys in the next video.